Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to talk about sunspots on the sun. Now, the reason why sunspots exist is because the differential rotation of the sun. The differential rotation of the sun means that near the equator of the sun, the sun rate rotates much faster, or yes, much faster, only about 25 days per rotation compared to higher latitudes. And at the poles, the estimation now is that the rotation of the sun is about 35 days per rotation, so much, much faster along the equator. And because of that, the magnetic fields that are inside the sun tend to get twisted up. And after number rotation, you can see that instead of having the field lines go straight across, they all get kind of bundled up in lines going across the sun like this rather than straight across the sun like that. And because of that, what happens is the, the, the magnetic field lines get all twisted up and sometimes they start popping out of the surface of the sun. And so, for example, you have like a little pop-up like right here and maybe a little pop-up like right there, maybe a little pop-up right there. And wherever the magnetic field line come, pops out and goes back into the surface at those locations, that's where sunspots begin to occur. Now, the sunspots do occur what we call in cycles. There are certain times in the cycle where there's virtually no sunspots or none at all. And then there's times in the cycle where you may have over 100 sunspots across the surface of the sun. Also, they appear at different latitudes during those particular cycles. By the way, those cycles are about 11 years long. And we'll have a little bit more, we'll have another video on the cycles, so that's another topic for later. But what we want to understand here is what causes sunspots and what they are, really. So sunspots, well, they actually were noted by Chinese astronomers more than 2,000 years ago. We always think about Galileo as the one who discovered sunspots, but we've seen sunspots uh, before, um, not we, of course, but people that lived long before us, of course they didn't know what they were, but sometimes the sunspots come in groups and the groups get to be so large that they're actually visible with the naked eye from the earth. Now, Of course you don't want to look at the sun with the naked eye, you want to have some sort of protection, otherwise you will damage your, your eyes. So we know that the, the sun is like a big manic, magnet with let's say the north pole at the north and the south pole at the south. Now the magnetic north and south pole don't necessarily have to match up with the actual physical north and south pole of the sun. But let's say in this case it does. And so what's interesting is that when the sunspots occur, that the leading sunspot, if the sun is rotating in this direction, the leading sunspot will be north and the trailing sunspot will be south. So this will be north and south north and south. You know that every magnet has, oh, I'm uh, making a mistake here. Every magnet does have a north pole and a south pole and that's, that is then exemplified by the sunspots where one of the, the leading sunspots will be one uh, pole and then the trailing sunspot will be the, the other pole. And typically sunspots do occur in pairs like that. But on the southern hemisphere, the orientation is different. So the leading sunspot will be south and the trailing sunspot will be north. So it'll have a north and south pole reversed in the southern part of the sun compared to the northern part or northern hemisphere of the sun. The size of the sunspots are about the size of the Earth. So when you think of a sunspot, it's about the same size as the Earth. And what's interesting is that the reason why they're called sunspots is because they look a lot darker. Now, the center part of the sunspot is very dark, and so we call that the umbra. So the dark part of the shadow, and then the region around the very dark portion of the sun, it's still darker than the rest of the sun, but not quite as dark as the umbra, that's called the penumbra. The temperatures, the temperature at the umbra is about 4,300 Kelvin, give or take a few hundred degrees. Well, that's very different compared to the rest of the sun, because the rest of the sun at the surface is about 5,800 Kelvin. So that's about a 1,500 degree Kelvin difference uh, between the the dark side of or the dark portion of the uh, sunspot versus the surface of the sun and that's why it looks dark now one sunspot will put out more light than a full moon although compared to the rest of the surface of the sun it tends to look quite a bit darker now what we also see is along the edge of the sunspot we'll have these flame-like structures that tend to pop up all around like this and those are called spicules and spicules are just hot jets of gas that, that are forced up by the magnetic field lines up into the, in the atmosphere of the sun. And they rise up as much as, hmm, let's say, five to 10,000 kilometers, about three to 5,000 miles away from the surface of the sun. And so we tend to see a lot of those near the edges of the, of the sunspots. Now, the reason, again, why it looks a lot darker is because the amount of light, so let's say the the dQ dt, the amount of heat, 
or the amount of power uh, that is being expelled from a certain surface of the sun is proportional to temperature to the fourth power. So that comes from the Stefan Boltzmann's law. And so imagine if we take 5800 and raise it to the fourth power versus 4300 and raise it to the fourth power, there is a significant difference in the amount of energy that is expelled from a sunspot compared to a similar area on the rest of the surface of the sun. So you can see, let's say you take 6, you square it, you get 36, you square it again to 16, square it again, uh, multiply it again times 6, that would be about 1500, versus 4 times 4, that would be 16, 64, 250. So we're talking about a ratio of about 5 to 1 or so, more energy being expelled from a similar area around of the surface of the sun compared to the region of the sunspot. So a lot more energy, uh, visible light, is being expelled from that region. Now the question would be, well, why does a sunspot actually exist? Well, it turns out the sun is constantly bubbling up energy from the interior through a convection uh, means. So from the interior of the sun, a massive quantity of, of uh, material is boiling to the surface, expelling its heat and sinking back in the surface. So we have this constant convection current taking place. And so these bright spots on the sun that you see here, they're called granules. They look brighter, all these little spots everywhere, because they're expelling that hot gas that came from the subsurface of the sun. And then the gas just sinks back into the sun and then gets more energy and keeps bubbling up like that. Well, the magnetic field lines when they pop up to the surface like that, they prevent that material to rise from the top, and so therefore no new material is rising on top and, and expelling heat from that. So that region of the sun where the sunspot is becomes relatively cooler and therefore becomes much dimmer, not nearly as bright, and therefore it looks to us like a dark spot. So it's really the magnetic field lines that are preventing the heat from bubbling up the, the gases, the plasma from bubbling up from the inside of the sun to the surface, they expel the heat, and that's why you get these dark spots like that. So the dark spots, they do occur in cycles, and we'll talk about the cycles in our next video.